Hey board gamers, how's it going? It's Mike Cassie here with the Weird Wood Manor board game vlog episode number five. Yeah, five. I think it's five. Is it five? I don't know why I'm looking off camera. There's no one else here to help me. I don't have any assistance. So in this episode, I'm now gonna take the board game ideas that I've been working on for the last several weeks, some of which you got to see in the last episode, and I'm now gonna take them all and sort of formalize them into some pitches for the guys. So let's get into it. Okay, so one of the things I have to do before pitching my game ideas to the guys is I've got to come up with some way to basically document those ideas. That's for the actual pitch session. I want to be able to bring something up on screen when I'm talking about each idea that is a bit of a guide for me talking about it and is also has some visuals to kind of help them understand and see the things I'm describing to them. As well, I have to come up with these things so that after the meeting, I can give them something to take away so that they can remember what I've talked about and still understand it and give them time to think about it and ruminate on the various ideas I'm pitching. Because it's not likely in those meetings that we're gonna figure everything out and have a direction to go and it's all easy peasy. So what I'm doing right now is starting to work on trying to visualize those ideas. And one of the benefits of having a background as a designer for all these years is I'm super comfortable working on a computer, laying out ideas and communicating things to people visually. So that's super cool. Though I think for someone who doesn't have that experience, you can still do it. It might not look as pretty, but we've talked about this before with like drawing. Basic is fine. Whatever you can do that helps communicate your ideas, super awesome. So in my case, I've got a design program open here and take a quick look. And I'm just sort of starting to work on laying out all these different ideas. And so I got to figure out exactly what it is I want to convey to the guys as I work on this stuff. And this is, these are kind of like one sheets or sell sheets that you might give to a publisher, but not exactly. So there's some details on here that I'm not putting on that a publisher would expect because the game isn't really that far along. So I don't have an age range on here. I don't have how many, how many minutes it is to play. I don't even have how many players it might play because again, the idea is still new enough and still unformed enough that it could be any of those particular things could be in any particular direction. So those kinds of details aren't on there. So what am I trying to communi communicate to the guys for the pitches? Well, I guess probably a couple things. Primarily the core idea, which as I thought about it, have suggested some mechanics. So trying to explain how some mechanics serve the idea and how that idea dovetails into the theme of the Weirdwood universe. So trying to communicate all that information. And then in addition to that, because they're certainly looking to me for my experience and my perspective and expertise, even though my expertise is, you know, questionable being a hobbyist designer and all, but wait, now I'm a professional designer. Anyways, they're looking for my expertise uh, to give them some guidance. And I know they'll ask my opinion about certain things. So I've tried to kind of rate some different things on these different ideas from my perspective, looking at things like how well do I think that this idea would support narrative play, something we identified was really important to the group or, what kind of app integration ideas could we potentially use with this idea? Or is that not, a, not at all a possibility? Um, and then other things, rating things like how well would it play as a co-op game? Or maybe a semi-cooperative game? Or could it be a competitive game? So those are the things I'm trying to lay out for the guys. Put together these final sheets to use during the presentation. And then for them to take them away after and think about what I've said and hopefully come back to me and say, Damn it, Mike. Those are amazing ideas. We can't choose one. You choose one. That probably won't happen, but you never know. Wishful thinking. All right, we'll see how it goes. So I've got six ideas that I've come up with that I'm gonna to pitch to the guys. And so let's take a look at them here. So I've got a little title page here. And then basically what I've done is I've given like a title page for each idea where I get to read basically the pitch of each idea. So I tried to come up with kind of a really short, compelling statement that describes the game for the guys, something that's a bit of a hook that might basically make someone's ears perk up and say, hey, what is that? That sounds kind of cool, tell me more. And then basically getting into each of the individual game ideas where I've tried to map out each idea as best I can at this point in time and basically give this to someone in a document format that they can read through it and hopefully understand kind of the core game design direction. For the ideas, let's go through them fairly quick here. So idea number one, the shifting Bacropolis. Moving through the ever-changing maze of the Bacropolis, you're trying to hunt down and defeat a monstrous fey construct that threatens the Bacropolis and the royal reading room at its heart. Can you and your companions, with help from the Bacropolis's caretakers, the Burbits, gather enough men and locate the books that are key to unraveling and defeating the creature's monstrous magic. All right, so there's kind of the game statement for that one. 
And so we go into the actual document where I kind of walk people through the actual design. And then, so I'm gonna do a really quick summarization of each of these ideas for you. So essentially the Shifting Bacropolis, the interesting hook here is that there's a circular board at the center of that board is a place called the Royal Reading Room. It's a special room at the center of the Bucropolis from which the characters can kind of operate from, kind of like a base or a headquarter. And then from that room, I've got these concentric circles of a board. And these circles basically can rotate during the course of the game, changing up the paths that go between the different locations represented by these little squares on here that the characters, the players can visit during the course of the game. And what's going to happen in this game is there's a big fey creature who wants to threaten the Bacropolis and threaten the Royal Reading Room, who's going to move throughout the board eventually towards the Royal Reading Room. And there'll be other fey minions that he spawns that threaten basically all these locations in the Bacropolis. And as they move towards the center of the board, you as characters are going to try to prevent that. And you're going to have to kind of move between locations, gathering the resources you need, magic, knowledge, and other things, to, to, do, to do battle with that fey creature and hopefully eventually defeat him. Idea number two, the Bacropolis Quests. You and your companions are on a quest to defeat a great threat to the Bacropolis and its many denizens. Gather your companions and venture forth into the Bacropolis as you search and explore to find a path to your ultimate goal, all the while keeping the fey at your heels at bay. Each narrative quest will offer different challenges to overcome, new paths to explore, and unexpected deadly surprises. So the Bucropolis quests also takes place in the Bucropolis. This big massive labyrinth of books and paths of magical locations that ever shifts and changes during the course of its lifespan. And it's caretakers of the Burbits who understand what's going on there and they file the books and they manage everything and keep everything in order. But there's to the outsider, there's someone trying to basically go through it, that it's like a maze that changes and you never know where you're, where you're gonna end up or where you're gonna go. So building off that thematically in this particular design is the idea that the players would play different scenarios. This one would be really heavy in terms of a narrative. There'd be an overarching narrative where the players are trying to achieve something or do something by the end of the game. And there'll be lots of story points and hopefully some surprises and really interesting things that happen along the way. So the players as a group are going to start with a deck of cards that represent basically the Bacropolis locations that they can move through. And they're going to be flipping cards over to go to locations. And every time they visit a location, they'll have a corresponding location book where they'll flip to a particular page and have some kind of interesting encounter. In this case here, they might do battle with their minis on a battle board with some other kind of unique attributes. Or they might have locations that present puzzles to them that they have to solve. Or locations that are unique places in the world where they'll have interactions with other characters. And those will change from scenario to scenario and location to location. So as they flip these cards and they explore a location, they'll be able to then put down unexplored cards next to them and choose where they want to go. And they'll slowly build a path along as they journey through the Bucropolis, having these different encounters and basically moving the story along and facing challenges and basically, hopefully, eventually getting to the end of whatever their particular quest is. It could be defeating some monstrous fey creature. It could be finding some important NPC or an artifact or all kinds of other things. And these scenarios may play as one-offs. They could even potentially be linked scenarios of a larger, broader, overarching campaign. So this is really kind of an exploration kind of quest kind of game with some interesting scenario kind of events along the way. Number three, Architects of the Manor. The Manor is under threat from the Order who have been besieging it in an attempt to tear it apart and bring chaos to the world. Can you and your companions repel the Order all while searching for and then working with Lady Weirdwood to repair and rebuild the Manor? All right, so what is this game about? So the Manor is basically a real special building in the Weirdwood universe. It's a building from which the Lord or Lady of Weirdwood oversees the balance between the Fae and the real, keeping things in order and not letting that balance get too out of, out of, out of whack so that the worlds kind of, kind of exist as peacefully as possible. And the manor itself specifically, because it's kind of at the nexus of basically the magical fae in the real world, is itself a very interesting, magical, mysterious kind of place where rooms and pathways between rooms can shift and change, where people can easily get lost and find themselves in fantastical places they never expected to be. 
And so it's the seat of power of the Lady or the Lord of Weirdwood and an important landmark in the whole Weirdwood universe. So in this particular game, what's happened is that the Order, who's this nefarious organization on the fringes of the world, who want to see chaos come to the world and have the Fae spill into the real and create all kinds of chaotic opportunities for them to rule. So you find yourselves as the players starting somewhere in the manor in a room and knowing that you're under siege from the Order who's, who are sending Fae minions into the manor to disrupt it and basically destroy the manor is, if, if they can. And your goal in the game is to locate Lady Weirdwood, who is trying to basically hold the manor together and repel the Fae and keep things in order in the manor. And the reason why you f want to find her is that she's the only one who knows what the true order or the true format is of the manor. She understands where all the rooms are and how they relate to each other. And it's her job to kind of keep that all intact and together. And so your job as the characters in this game is, are going to be to take all of the rooms of the manor, which at the beginning of the game are out of order, perhaps even missing or in the wrong configuration, and try and take those rooms and shift them back into the right order again. And so the only way you as the players can know what the right order is, is by consulting Lady Weirdwood. She's the only one who knows the true being of the manor. And so the mechanic here is that once you've located her, you can talk to Lady Weirdwood and you can use Lady Weirdwood's, Weirdwood's skill to essentially find out what the current state of the manor is and how to fix it. In this case, the mechanic uses an app and it uses a mechanic that is familiar to most of you who've played an older game called Mastermind. And so the idea here is when you consult Lady Weirdwood, you can take a picture of your actual game board with all the rooms that are on it and wherever they are located and however they're oriented and take a picture of the app and the app will tell you, the players, how close you are to re assembling all of those rooms in the right order. In this case here, green check marks might say the room's in the right spot. Uh, a red X might say it's not. You might have hints that tell you it has to move in a particular direction or even be rotated in a particular orientation. And so the players will be both fighting against the Fey minions to stop them from further disrupting the rooms and shifting them around and maybe flipping them over to the Fey all the while trying to switch the order of these rooms and get them in the right configuration. And the real challenge about this is while this is going on, it's taking all of the ladies' powers to basically keep the fate at bay and keep that manor from basically, basically disintegrating into nothing. And so every time you talk to her and say, tell us how close we are to reassembling the manor, she has to use more of her power to do that. And it means that if she does it too many times or the face spreads too much, she might die and you might lose the game. So you've got a finite amount of times you can talk to her and check in on your progress to figure out are you moving the rooms in the right locations? And as you're battling the Fae and moving it throughout the manor, you're going to be using certain powers and actions in the game to basically shift these different rooms from place to place to get them back in the right configuration. It's also worth noting that while you're doing that, some of the doors here, it might be that players can only move between rooms where there are actual doors. So there might be some pathways you have to manage where you move and stuff. So that's Architects of the Manor. The Battle for Kingsport, idea number four. Here we go. Kingsport is being overrun by the Fae, and a great, monstrous Fae creature is leading the charge. Buildings are being destroyed, parts of the city are becoming tainted by the Fae, and it's up to the factions of both worlds, the Thieves, the Ochres, the Wardens, and the Burbits, to come to its rescue and restore peace and order to Kingsport, and restore the precarious balance between the Fae and the real. But does each faction also see opportunity in this chaos? A chance to rule the manor that sits at the center of all this and become the next true power? Or will they stay united in their purpose? So this particular game has each player playing a particular faction, the Burbits, the Wardens, the Thieves, and the Ochres. And they're playing in the context of a board where one side of the board is Kingsport, a city in the Weirdwood universe, and the other side is a Fey world, and that the nexus is the manor. And the manor is always at the nexus between worlds when it comes to the Fey and the real. And in this particular game, there's a couple things that are happening. There is a cooperative element of this game in that what's going to happen is a, is a Fey creature, as I've said, who's going to be threatening the world, and Fey minions that are getting introduced who are trying to basically taint the world and if the creature and or minions do too much of that the players collectively can lose the game so they collectively have to manage that fey creature and those minions they have to keep the minions in check and ultimately try and defeat that fey creature if they can but while they're doing that 
there is also sort of a competitive or at least a semi-cooperative -co aspect of this game in that these different factions will have their own individual meeples that they're going to move out on the board. And these meeples will basically be going from location to location to take actions and do things and battle the Fey. But they'll also be able to go to locations and put themselves down on a location both to, 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 to essentially control that location. And there'll be an area of control mechanic here where if you as a faction control a particular location, that might con confer some benefits to you as a, as a faction. It might give you some resources or an action or some powers, but it also, at the end of the game, will confer to you some points on that particular location. So the more locations you basically control in the game, the further ahead of all the other factions you are. And at the end of the game, you could potentially rule Kingsport and the manor and the world if you control more factions than other players control. And so there's also the possibility of a fifth player playing the Fae in this game who might battle against the other players. So this particular game has this element of, the, of a cooperative element of trying to fight against the Fae and the Fae creature, but also individually as a faction trying to rule as much of the world to ultimately be the final power at the end of the game. Another interesting mechanical just note here is that as Fae minions corrupt or taint particular locations on the board, those locations can flip to now becoming tainted by the Fae. And they might become unusable, or they might be a place where more Fae spawn or do something else in the world um, in this particular game state. Here we are with idea number five, the Battle of Titans. Initiates of the manor, you are tasked with guarding the manor while the wardens are away on an important mission. The order, get, the order gains wind of this and conjures a powerful creature from the Fey to wreak havoc in the manor. The only way to defeat it is to pool your growing powers together and create a construct to battle against it and expel it from the manor. You and your companions must gather the necessary arcane information, min, and parts to bring your own unique construct into being and then send it to do battle. But be careful, the Fey creature is wreaking havoc in the manor, and the longer you take to create your construct, the closer you come to ultimate defeat. All right, so this particular design, again, resolves around the manor. And the idea here is the manor is under threat from a Fey, a giant Fey creature that the Order has brought to the manor to attack it. And you, as an initiate of the manor, and initiates are kind of the lowest rung of people who would work in the manor. Wardens are a level above them, and then you've got the Lady and the Lord of Weirdwood. And so you're just initiate. So your powers, your individual powers, aren't particularly strong. And so in this game, you've got to pool them together, and you've got to try and create your own construct to battle that fey creature and hopefully defeat it and remove it from the manor. And so in this particular game, there's a couple things happening that the creature is moving through the manor, and it may be leaving fey taint behind it, so there still may, may be a threat of that taint tainting rooms in the manor and flipping them over to the fey so they become unusable or somehow they have a negative consequence. And you as the players are going to be moving through the manor trying to collect the necessary resources to build your construct. So min, again, which is kind of like mana or magic in the weird wood world, parts that you need, and knowledge or books to know how to build your construct. And so the interesting thing here is while you do that, you're going to use these different resources to build your own unique construct. And your own unique construct is going to be built from different kinds of heads, torso, and leg kind of sections. So if you remember the old flip books you had as a kid um, where you had like three sections, you would flip each one to create your own unique creature. It has that kind of element to it so that, that the players can build a unique construct. And those different sections might have different abilities or attributes or strengths to use when you battle the construct. And so the players are collecting these resources, they're building their construct to go out and do battle with the Fey creature. The interesting thing though is they're going to have to balance those resources for building a construct against finding out about the Fey creature. Because at the start of the game, they're not going to know what the attributes are of the Fey creature. They're just, they're just going to know it's somewhere in the manor. And so they'll be able to, sit, for example, spend knowledge they acquire to find out about the specific attributes of that creature. Or they might be able to go find that creature actually in the manor with their own player pawns to look at it and find out things about it. And that might have some inherent risks as well when they do that because they'll be in the same room as that creature. If they find out information about the creature, what's good about that is they might find that it's weak against certain things. And they might be able to build their construct then to take advantage of that. But again, they have to basically balance the fact that they have a finite amount of time to do all this stuff and potentially a finite amount of resources. So if they spend knowledge to find out about the creature, that's less knowledge they have potentially to use in building their own construct. And then at the end of the game will be, they'll send their, their construct out and they'll hopefully defeat that fake creature to win the game. 
All right, final idea, number six, Lords of Weirdwood. The great manor has fallen to ruin with the death of the last Lord of Weirdwood, and the Fae threatens it and the balance it protects. But who will be the next Lord or Lady of the manor, and what will they rule? You must compete with your warden companions to be the next Lord or Lady of the manor. Build the greatest manor Weirdwood has ever seen, and staff it with your most fantastical creatures and valiant companions. But beware, the Fae threatens all, and if one of your warden companions fail, you all fail. So this idea number six might be familiar to you if you've watched past episodes, because this is an idea that I started to work on when I was talking about the idea of drafting characters or creatures in the world. And so we did a session where I showed you, showed myself working through that idea on a piece of paper, and this is what it became in sort of quote unquote final, at least this point, format. So if you recall, we started with this idea of drafting potentially characters or creatures, and we worked through some permutations of that and some rough ideas. And I took that and I did a little more work on it, started to refine it some more, and eventually got to this idea. In this particular idea, you are a warden, um, someone who has magical abilities, who basically works or is a part of the manor, and in this particular case, the later Lord have, has, has passed on and the manor no longer is, is in ruins and we need a new manor. And so each warden is going to have their own unique player board where they can build their own unique manor. And they're going to be cent centered around or situated around a central board representing some part of the Fae with a bunch of interesting locations. And each player is going to have a their own player mini or pawn to go out into the Fae and basically collect resources in, for, in order for them to build rooms in their manor and to potentially draft or recruit creatures and characters to bring back into the rooms that they've built in their manor and place into their actual rooms, creatures and or characters. The reason for doing that is that these creatures or characters will confer some kind of benefits when they're placed in rooms. That could be in terms of adding points to the rooms because ultimately at the end of the game once one of the wardens has completed their manor everyone's going to add up the points of their manor and whoever has basically the most points who's built the greatest manor will ultimately be the winner and the next lord or lady of weirdwood and so they'll be putting characters or creatures into these rooms to basically confer benefits or gain extra points and i right now these creatures or characters i see as potentially being printed on acetate so that they, they can get laid over top of the rooms and whatever is printed on that acetate can interact with under what's in the room to score them extra points. For example, this room here has a spot where there's minus one point, but here's a creature that covers up that spot so you don't lose that one point. Or here's a creature that might double those points. Or it could be all kinds of other things. This is one potential mechanic. Okay, so there, we're done with our six ideas. Before I leave you, I'd encourage you to download that PDF. Have a read through this document that I've got right here. Look at it in detail. Hopefully it's gonna give you a good picture of what I'm pitching to the guys. And if you're gonna take the time to do that, share your thoughts with me. I wanna really hear what you guys have to say. Okay, I think that's a wrap for this episode. So thanks for sitting down at the table with me again. And I look forward to our next episode where you're gonna to get to see me pitch the ideas to the guys and we'll see what they think about them. In the meantime, please subscribe and or like the video if you appreciate what I'm trying to do here. And don't forget to leave your comments, ideas, and thoughts about the game ideas I presented today. I really do wanna to hear what you guys have to say and what you think about them. So until next time, board gamers, keep gaming.